Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, Intel i5 CPU performance comparison. Today we are testing three different i5 CPUs from three different generations. The i5-2400 Sandy Bridge processor, the i5-4440 Haswell processor, and the i5-6400 Skylake processor. All three CPUs are running at 3.1 GHz. Each machine also has the same graphics card and the same amount of system RAM. Installed in each machine is EVGA's GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Superclock graphics card, a wonderful graphics card that I have previously reviewed. Link in the video description below to that review if you would like to see it. Each of the machines has 16 gigs of RAM. The only difference is clock speed because each platform runs on a different speed of RAM. The i5-2400 has 16 gigs of DDR3-1333 megahertz RAM. The i5-4440 is running 16 gigs of DDR3-1600 megahertz RAM. And the i5-6400 is running 16 gigabytes of DDR4-2133 megahertz RAM. Otherwise, the machines are exactly the same. Each is running off a solid state drive and each, as I said, is clocked at 3.1 gigahertz. We are playing today at 1080p full HD resolution. Ultra detail preset is used, anti-aliasing is on, and V-Sync is turned off. Fraps was used for the minimum, maximum, and average performance numbers you will see at the end of this video, but it was not used to record the video that you're watching. Instead, an external HD60 Pro hardware capture card was used, recorded on another computer. There is zero performance loss for the fact that I've recorded this gameplay. The computer doesn't even know it was being recorded. The numbers in green at the top left corner of the screen are from MSI Afterburner, a free program that you can download from MSI.com to get real-time information on what your computer, your CPU, your RAM, your graphics card, etc. are doing in real time. I have done a video on how to set that up. Link in the video description below to go check that out. Now, I recorded over one hour of gameplay here between the three different cards. Don't worry, I'm not going to show you all hour and 15 minutes that I recorded because, frankly, it would get boring at some point. The entire point is to show you representative samples of the gameplay from each of the three different runs on the three different machines. We are currently watching the i5-2400 based machine. Take a look at the MSI Afterburner numbers at the top left corner of the screen. The top line is the GTX 1050 Ti itself, and the percentage indicates that we're using all of the compute performance of the card. The 99% simply means that the graphics card is 100% utilized. The temperature of the card of the actual chip itself is a very reasonable 63 degrees Celsius, and it is running at just over 1700 megahertz. Side note, the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Superclock card does not come set to this clock speed from the factory, but I have not manually overclocked it. It actually comes with a boost speed of 1468 MHz. However, the new 10 series from NVIDIA includes GPU boost. It will auto overclock if temperature and power delivery are available and run at a higher clock speed than it shipped to give you more performance. So the 1700 plus megahertz that the card is running at is not something that I set in MSI Afterburner or adjusted in any way. The card did that all on its own. Now this card comes with four gigabytes of VRAM. You can see that we're using about 1400 megabytes of it, which is less than half. Do you need a four gigabyte graphics card to play Overwatch? No, not at all, not at 1080p. Any of the two gigabyte cards will do just a fine job. The i5-2400 line, the third line, shows our CPU usage. Take a look at the percentage of our CPU. We are, in fact, using most of it. 82%, 81%. Now, the way the CPU usage works is we have four processing cores and four threads because the i5 is a true quad-core processor. This is an important point. When the CPU usage is at 50%, then we are fully utilizing two of our cores. When it's at 75%, we're using three of our cores, and when it's 100%, we are completely occupying all four of our cores. A dual-core processor that has hyper-threading, such as an i3, will display the same types of percentages because it also has four threads, even though it actually only has two cores. When it's at 50%, its two cores are fully utilized. Why do I bring this up? Will Overwatch play on an i3? Yes. Will it play better on an i5? Yes. 
I will at some point do a comparison of i3, i5, i7 with games like Overwatch and GTA 5 in the future, but I want to point out that even Overwatch, which is not a heavily demanding game, really does use a quad-core processor to its full potential. It is my opinion that in 2017, if you really want to play games, and you want to play something beyond League of Legends or Counter-Strike Global Offensive, quad-core processors are the new minimum. i3s work, dual cores with hyper-threading work, but, but what works and what you really should have are two different things. Considering that these i5 2400 based computers are under $150 on eBay, in my mind there's really no excuse not to have a quad-core processor for gaming. If by chance a brand new machine with a quad-core is simply out of the budget, I would buy one of these i5 2400 machines for under $150, I would drop in a graphics card and that's what I would use to play games on, rather than building or buying a dual-core machine that is new because I think the quad core makes the difference even though this particular computer is over five years old. Take a look at the temperature of our CPU, 64 degrees Celsius. We're using, there's 96, 99% of our CPU. The temperature of the CPU is very reasonable. Please note, this is a basic Dell Mini Tower Optiplex 790 pre-built computer. There is no fancy cooling. I've not changed anything in any way from the way Dell shipped this computer more than five years ago, and the CPU is running very cool. That is nice. There is no need for fancy cooling on these machines. It works very well. Take a look at our system RAM usage. We are using 7.6, 7.7 gigabytes of system RAM. Now we have 16 gigabytes installed, so this is not an issue. The game has all the room it needs, and then anything over that for Windows or disk cache uh, fits into the rest of the RAM just fine. Having said that, will Overwatch play in eight gigs of RAM? Yes, it will. Will it be as smooth? Mostly. There will be a few more stutters and a little bit lower minimum frame rate. It's not the sort of game that's going to struggle because it's not an open world game. There's not that much. Oh, that's going to hurt. Hey, and I survived and I didn't. In 2017, I recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you can't, 8 gigabytes of RAM still works, but minimum frame rates and overall smoothness in many games do start to suffer with only 8 gigabytes of RAM installed. It's also worth noting, this is a test machine. There's nothing else running on this machine. This is not a personal computer. There's no personal files loaded. It has a relatively fresh copy of Windows 10 installed. The only things running on this machine are MSI Afterburner, Fraps is recording the frame rate in the background, and the game, nothing else. Now remember, the video is being recorded on a different machine, so the recorded video is not affecting the machine in any way because the capture card is installed in a completely separate computer. I strongly encourage you, if at all possible, to upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I genuinely believe that 16 gigabytes on an older machine is often smoother than eight gigabytes on a new machine. Note, I didn't say faster, I said smoother. There's a difference. There's average frame rates, and then there's minimum frame rates. And that's a topic I'll be covering in an upcoming series of videos where I do things like different amounts of RAM to show overall levels of smoothness and minimum frame rates. Speaking of frame rates, take a look at the bottom line of MSI Afterburner, our real-time frame rates, 73, 71, 77, 80, wow, 84, 83. We are playing on a five, almost six year old computer, basic pre-built with a basic $150 graphics card and we are at ultra detail at 1080p and we are touching 100 frames per second. That's incredible. The whole point of this video is that you simply do not need a brand new high-end expensive thousand dollar computer to play games. This is gorgeous. Take a look at how pretty the graphics are. This game plays beautifully. Now I am going to show you brief snippets of the i5-4440 and the i5-6400, but suffice it to say, if we're getting 100 frames per second on the i5-2400, you already know what the outcome is going to be. It plays just fine on these older machines. The only question is, does it play any faster on the newer machines? Let's go take a look. And so here we are on the i5-4440, again 1080p, ultra detail, same graphics card, nothing else has changed. Just quickly here to show you the graphics detail settings, 100% render resolution, everything's the same. Marching forward, let's get into the battle. 
Our GTX 1050 Ti is again running at 99%. We're using all of the power of our graphics card. It's running at 71 degrees C, basically the same as before. It might be slightly warmer in this run, but keep in mind, it's installed in a physically different machine. This is not a Dell, this is an Acer. It's an Acer Aspire pre-built machine, slightly different case, different airflow, different cooling. So the temperatures that you'll get on your CPU and graphics card will vary depending upon the machines that you have your gear installed in. Clock speed, however, is basically the same, just over 1700 megahertz. Why? Because this graphics card will comfortably run up to 83 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature cutoff limit. Beyond 83 degrees, it will start throttling itself in order to prevent it from getting any hotter. One of the uses of MSI Afterburner beyond benchmarking is things like this. If your computer is not performing as you expect, if you feel like you're getting dropped frames or your minimum frame rate is very low or it's very stuttery, running this can let you know, are your temperatures okay? Is your clock speed stable? Watch the GPU clock speed. We are very stable above 1700 megahertz. If you are running Afterburner and you're playing Overwatch and you see it dipping down to 12, 1300, jumping up to 1500, going up to 17, going back down to 13, and you see the temperature at 80 to 82 degrees Celsius, you have a thermal problem. Your case doesn't have enough airflow, or there's a problem with the fan on your GPU. Either way, something's wrong, and that's one way to diagnose your machine to see why are you not getting the performance that you expect. Take a look at our VRAM. Now, on this particular machine, I didn't have them reordered. This is the default order MSI Afterburner comes in, my apologies. The clock speed of the RAM is first. So look at the second item, the 1454, 1458 megabytes. So we're still using about the same, um, about one and a half gigabytes of VRAM. The display order is simply an MSI Afterburner setup thing. Because these are in fact different machines, I have to set it up on each machine and you just have to drag and reorder them and I didn't, so that's the only minor thing. They'll be back in the, in the order I prefer in the next video. Now, i5-4440, that's our CPU. We are again using about three of the four cores. Now we're into the fourth one, 81%, 77. Depending on how, what's going on on the screen, how much action, how many explosions is where that's at. Temperature, 60 degrees, totally within normal limits. Again, pre-built machine, simple basic cooler, nothing is fancy whatsoever. Main system RAM, this is interesting. Main system RAM is at 4.5 gigabytes. The previous machine was at 7 point something. Why the discrepancy? Well, different map, different game, different scenario. Both of these computers have 16 gigs of RAM. Both machines have a relatively clean, relatively fresh install of Windows 10 on them. Both are test machines. I don't use either of these computers personally. They are strictly for benchmarking and testing. That being said, three gigabytes of main system RAM usage difference between the machines is fairly large. Why? That's a good question. I might have to investigate that further. To be completely honest, right this moment as I'm recording this video, I cannot tell you why the difference is. I don't change or alter the numbers. I record them, I benchmark them, I show them to you, whatever they may be. That being said, performance does not appear to be affected. However, I will look into this in more detail when I do the eight gigabytes versus 16 gigs main system RAM test at some point in the future. I may even try four or six just to try different combinations. I will look into the main system RAM memory usage in more detail when I do those videos and figure out why it seems to vary from run to run, computer to computer, and map to map. All right, that's enough of the i5-4440. Let's take a look at the i5-6400. Again, GTX 1050Ti, again, 16 gigabytes of main system RAM, again, ultra detail. As you can see here, 100% render resolution. I've tried very hard to make all the settings the same. Now, I realize the maps are not the same. However, in my experience, Overwatch performance does not appear to vary very much depending on which map. They've got these maps very well balanced. They all appear to play about the same in terms of performance and responsiveness. They don't seem to make much difference. Again, first line of MSI Afterburner, 99% GPU usage, 67 degrees Celsius temperature. The clock speed again is over 1700 megahertz. Looking at our four gigabytes of VRAM, we are at just under 1.4 gigabytes. They're in the correct order this time because this is on the Acer Aspire T 
pre-built computer that I have reviewed on my channel before. $400, drop in a video card, you've got yourself a great gaming machine. If you do not want to buy a used machine, if you want something new, if you want the newer technology of Skylake, then here you go, great performance. Take a look at the CPU usage. 79, 86%, it's basically the same as it was on the other machines. We are in fact using three to four cores without any issue. Take a look at the temperature of the CPU, 50 degrees Celsius. This is by far the coolest running of the three CPUs. Please note, this is the newest technology. This is a 14 nanometer production process chip. The 4440 is a 22 nanometer and the 2400 is a 32 nanometer. Smaller, generally, not always, but generally runs cooler. Because all three of these machines are running at 3.1 gigahertz, that means that the newer one is going to run cooler. Now, it's still a different case, different uh, cooling system, different airflow environment. That being said, this Acer Aspire T runs very, very cool at about 50 degrees Celsius. Look at our main system RAM usage. 16 gigs of RAM, we're using, well, look at that. We're using four and a half gigabytes of it. That's very similar to the 4400. So why was the i5-2400 using eight gigs of RAM? I may actually go back and retest that. And if I do it, I'll post in the comment section below what happened with that. I may go back and put that card, it's not in it at the moment. I'll go put that card back in that machine and test it because I'm genuinely curious as to why it was using so much. Again, I will leave a comment in the description below once I do that and let you know what the result was. In either case, it appears to be running just fine on four and a half gigabytes of RAM, go figure. As I said before, I test it, I run it, I record it, I show it to you. I don't aim for a result. One thing I don't do when I'm benchmarking is I don't try to get a specific result. I just run it and it is. I also don't run these 15 times looking for the perfect run or try to tell a story. I just take it for what it is because it would be way too easy to run this over and over looking for the perfect result or looking for a result that tells a story that I want to tell. Instead, I run it and I take the results as they are rather than trying to play around with it to get something specific. Why do I even need to say that? Uh, I wish I could say that never happens, but I'm sure it does somewhere, but I don't. I just, so I'm showing you the results as I got them, discrepancies and all. Now take a look at our real-time frame rate. Look at that, we're at 90 plus frames per second. Now of course the frame rate at any given moment is gonna vary depending upon what's happening. I just died, I was zooming back to the battle. Here we have explosions, it's dropped down a bit. However, I do record enough of it. Overall, between these three runs, there was, well, not quite an hour of total recording. I'm not showing all of it to you, of course. That would make the video entirely too long. But the idea is that the averages work themselves out over time. Yes, there are high peaks and low peaks, but if you record enough footage, eventually you'll get to the average either way. All right, that's enough testing. You get the idea. Let's go take a look at the results. And here we are at the results. Overwatch, 1080p Ultra Detail, 85, 83, and 91 frames per second, uh, respectively between the 2400, 4440, and 6400. It's a little faster on the 6400, not much. The differences are very minor. The minimum frame rates are a little bit higher, but again, it's different maps, different test runs, etc. I could probably run this five more times and each of these numbers would change by three to five frames per second just based upon the variability of doing an online multiplayer game such as Overwatch. That's why the i5-2400 may appear to be three frames per second faster here but it isn't really, that is statistically the same. 83 to 85 in terms of an average, they're basically the same performance. Is the 6400 slightly faster? Yeah, it might be. It might be five-ish frames per second faster. The run actually makes it look like it's eight frames per second faster. But then you would expect a newer machine to be slightly faster. However, Consider that the i5-2400 can be purchased for under $150 and the i5-6400 is $400. There you go. There's a result. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel using the big huge red button directly below this video. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, if you like my video, if you found this helpful in any way, check out the video description below. 
links to my Acer Aspire T $400 review, links to my EVGA 1050Ti review, links to Amazon and Newegg and eBay for all the items that I described here, links to my review on the i5 2400 $250 gaming computer deal are all in the video description below. Go check those out. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I will see you next time.